Should comic books try and grow the audience by appealing to different groups, different readers, things that are traditionally not their core customer base? Well, I mean, the answer, of course, is yes. But how do you do it? And what do you do with the existing customer base? Hey, this is Perch. Uh, I've talked about this topic a bunch in a little places, so it's kind of like almost as a Frankenstein video where I can stitch together other things. But as we're entering the new year, um, it's important to take a look at you know comics and their efforts to grow their market. Now, I'll say in the offset, comics needs to grow their market. That's the premise of what I'm about to say and, and my belief. I think that comics as a whole has ha they have to find new readers. They have to find new audiences. They have to find new people to widen the pie, widen the pot, whatever you want to say, uh, of comics. And the challenge is their existing reader base is both aging and getting isolated and getting priced out of comics and being um, you know actively turned away in some cases. So if you're going to do that, you got to replace them with something. And comics, if you haven't noticed, a lot of people wonder, like, why is, you know, why are comics putting out these trash comics? Why are they putting out these comics of, you know, with kids in them? What was going on? And the answer is they're not crazy people who are just trying to tank an industry. Some people have speculated that this is some kind of, you know, deliberate intention for the comic industry to drive readers away to pave the way for socialism or I, I who knows. Or that they're just, you know, maniacally incompetent. That's that's something I've heard too. But the reality is they are trying to find new readers. They're just doing a very bad job of it. Now, you might say, well, that's just your opinion, man. But it's not. Actually, facts back that up. So first off, yes, they absolutely are trying to reach markets that have a lot of readers and more importantly, have a lot of money. When Marvel Comics goes out and they sign a deal with Rainbow Rowell to do some comics, it is not that, you know, some people like the name Rainbow and just wanted to give her a job. It's the fact that she worked in a space that is proving to be profitable, proving to have money. Whether it's Raina Telmiger or uh, that, that entire industry has been a growth business for books and Scholastic and other places. So there's, there's people, interest, and money coming in there. So the idea of let's hire this person who can come in and help to bring some of those readers over and get something started, that was the intent. It's one reason why Runaways is allowed to go on so long, even though its numbers are not great. But that the numbers are not great kind of prove the second part of my theory. One, Marvel's not doing crazy things by bringing these people in. Neither is DC, neither is anybody. They're trying to go after a market that does exist. However, second part of my statement, they're doing it very, very poorly. And we can objectively know this. Forget for a moment, let's say, because I have people in my videos like, every now and then come running in and goes, oh, you just hate Alan Newing, and, but his works are great. Cool. I'm glad. And I'm glad Hulk has been a success and Alan Ewing can finally hang his hat on a title that sells. But Alan Ewing's, uh, you know, his reputation or his, his legacy at Marvel is a lot of very low selling early cancellation books. I'm not saying that somebody who likes or dislikes Al Ewing's work. I, for the record, think Al Ewing's writing often dips into deep continuity and he cares about the deeper Marvel Universe. That's cool. I'm with it. Some of his uh, you know, social commentary comes off as ham-fisted. I think that's not cool. But that, be it that as it may, whether I like or dislike Al Ewing is kind of irrelevant. The point is that the books aren't selling well and they're not landing with this new audience. Go into a comic shop, people who are picking up Runaways typically are people who liked the first volume of Runaways, which is nearly 20 years old now. So, cool, if you like the first volume of Runaways and you are a collector and you want to be back on board for the new version, you're buying it. And that's great. And Marvel loves the fact that you're back giving them your money again. The challenge is, the goal was not necessarily to get that you know, for lack of a better word, old money, it was to bring in new money. And the new money is not coming. How do we know this? Because the numbers don't support it. 
the comic shops are not seeing new customers coming in who have never bought comics before. Yes, there's always a customer, but not droves of customers. The purpose of you know making books like what Raina Tellmeyer does is to get Raina Tellmeyer like numbers, and those have not appeared. Marvel was very happy with Miss Marvel and its financial success, Kamala Khan, but it was still one fiftieth, one I, I maybe lower than that of what Raina Tellmeyer sells. So they were happy because it was a it was a decent selling book for what they were producing at the time aimed at an audience that was not their core audience. The challenge is nobody really had a way of knowing at the time if it was bringing in new money or old money. But as time has gone by, I think the story has been told it was by and large old money, not new fans. If there were new fans brought in by these books, they're not sticking around. So it's two important points I'm making here, and I think people like to argue with both of them. One, the comic companies are right to go pursue these other markets. They kind of have to. If you're going to grow comics, you have to constantly be looking for ways to grow comics, which means new readers, new audiences, new groups, new people who aren't reading comics today. Going after a tween audience or a you know teenage 20-year-old audience is smart. Some of these people do not have the same attachment to Batman and Superman and Spider-Man and Captain America that long-term comic collectors do. Making new heroes and new teams and new books that they can, quote-unquote, get in on the ground floor with, it's not a bad idea. Reaching out to other groups, the LGBTQ audience, for example, is, in theory, not a bad idea, although I would argue is not a very sizable group. So if you're going to reach out to that audience, you actually are not just reaching out to that audience, you're reaching out to a progressive audience. You're reaching out to an audience of uh, LGBTQ and S, as in straight, who are sympathetic or like or appreciate those storylines. If you're going to reach out to that audience, cool. You've got to do it, though, in a way that's going to get their money and make them feel attached to the book. Saga has managed to do that. Saga's had gay characters trans characters, other things too. <laughs> it's, had, I, it's had many of the many of the LGBTQ elements are in Saga. Saga sells. It's hitting that audience well. The makeup of that audience from the surveys that they've done, and you can see in the comic shops, are, yes, certainly some traditional long-term comic fans, but also a lot of newer fans. It is bringing in people who haven't necessarily read comics before, and a lot of people in their teens and 20s. Awesome. Trans, uh, move over for a moment to the Unstoppable Loss for the Future Foundation, both written by Jeremy Whitley, both which feature LGBTQ audiences and both sell miserably. Why? Why is that? Is it because the art is bad? No, it's the contrary. The art on uh, you know, Future Foundation is pretty decent. The art on Wasp was quite good. Is it the writing? Well, you may or may not like Whitney's, Whitley's writing, but I mean, it's not, it's there. It's not like Gabby Rivera where you're, it's, it's painful to read. It's, it's a comic book writer writing a story. We haven't really ever seen Jeremy Whitley stretch his wings and, and, you know, write a big time story, a, a story where a lot of things counts. He's written smaller series and that's fine, but yeah, a decent writer. So what's going wrong? Well, what's going wrong is, unlike Saga, it's not landing with a new audience. It's not connecting with them. And whose fault is that? Is it Marvel's fault that they're not marketing to the right places? Is it the price tag on the cover is just too high? I mean, Saga is cheaper by a a decent amount for comics. I mean, it's it's like 50 cents. You can say, ah, it's not very much money. But, you know, that's, what, one-eighth? I'm doing the math. Eh, It doesn't matter. Anyway, it's cheaper. Saga is cheaper, I guess, by the way. Um, why, you know, if Marvel and DC want this audience and they do, why are they so poor at marketing to it? Why are they so poor at actually attracting it and keeping it? And it's a good question. It's a question that bears a lot of contemplation and a lot of thought. Um, I think, you know, for the record, I love to see Unstoppable Lost and Future Foundation, these other books just landing with readers and, and doing great, but it's not working. And one, one maybe solution here for Marvel, 
is I think to take a look at books like Wicked the Divine and Saga and some of the other indie books that are doing quite well, and to, and to look at their own success with the Ultimate Universe. And maybe it's time, Marvel Comics, that you actually create an imprint that is not your core Marvel Universe, and you tell very progressive stories aimed at that audience in that universe, and you market it as kind of a screw the Marvel Universe. This universe is for you. Maybe it's time they tried that approach. I mean, there's a lot of options here. The, co- the point is, it's not working today. And unfortunately, when people say it's not working today, the response from Marvel and a lot of these creators is either block or to say, you're wrong. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And okay, cool, except the numbers on these books and the connection to these audiences is not happening factually, quantifiably, is not happening. So you got to do something different. And and here, please listen to the words in my voice. If you're if you're Marvel Comics, you're one of these creators, you're, you're itching to go, I want you to succeed. I want you to sell those comics. I want you to connect to that audience. I desperately do. And my solution to you is not to make all the characters straight, hire a bunch of 90s comic artists, and have them blow crap up at each other. That's not what I'm saying. I think you should go at this market, this new market. I think you should connect with it. I think you should sell to it. I think we should have the old, existing collector's market who loves comics the way they were in the 80s. I think we should serve them. I think we should serve the new market. I think we should serve everybody. Let's make comics for everyone. I don't think it's rocket science. But you got to be doing a better job than you're doing now because you are not connecting with the audience you want to connect to. And then you're just getting pissy about it when somebody points that out. Anyway, that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts below. How does this new market work? How does this audience work? Would love to hear your feelings on the matter. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening.